the fourth part of the energy unit, and today we will be solely talking about the Calvin Cycle. The Calvin Cycle, in overview, the purpose is to produce glucose. This is the second part of photosynthesis, and remember the first part is light dependent reaction. So why is it called the Calvin Cycle? It's because of this gentleman here, Mr. Melvin Ellis Calvin. He is a chemist at the University of Berkeley, California. For his work in discovering the Calvin Cycle, he was awarded the Nobel Prize, a very prestigious prize, in 1961. He did not work alone. He had help in which he worked with Mr. Andrew Benson and also Mr. James Bassam. All three of them worked at the University of California, Berkeley. So the general overview of the Calvin Cycle is shown here. There are three steps. The first step is called carbon fixation. The second step here is shown is there's a lot more because there's two parts to the second step. The production of 3-phosphoglycerate and also the production of glucose. And the last step here is restocking the ribulose by phosphate. So the first step is carbon fixation. This is where the plants take the opportunity of taking carbon dioxide from the environment and putting it into a chemical form of sugar. So to make one molecule of sugar, glucose, the carbon cycle has to go through six times because only one carbon dioxide is allowed in for every cycle. So in total, six molecules of carbon dioxide with six molecules ribulose biphosphate. The ribulose biphosphate is a type of five carbon sugar. Together, they will form 12 three phosphoglycerates. Now, if you notice, you start off with six ribulose biphosphate groups. And if it runs through six times, that will give you 12 three phosphoglycerates. That way, the carbon stays consistent number of carbon. The second step in the Calvin cycle is the it's called the three phosphoglycerate and glucose production. Here, two of the phosphoglycerate molecules can be found to form one molecule of glucose. So they'll take two from the twelve of the three phosphoglycerate there, and then eventually with the, the cycle, it'll form one molecule of glucose. So in order to do that, they'll need some energy. Take 12 ATPs and 12 NADPHs. All of these are from the light dependent reactions. When you do the 12 ATPs, it'll produce 12 ADPs in phosphorus and releasing action. Then you have 12 NADPHs, which are turned into NADPs. Now, they don't use all 12. For every time it goes through, it takes two of those three phosphoglycerates, creating one glucose. Now, if this was to go through six times, you'll get six molecules of glucose towards the end. So, let's go over the process again. You have 12 three phosphoglycerates. Now, those 12. You take two of them and you add 12 ATPs, which will create 12 ADPs and Ps. 12 NADPHs, giving you 12 NADPs. The energy will create two 3 phosphoglycerates, which will in turn create one molecule of glucose. Now, originally we had 12 minus the two that we used to make sugar. We are left with 10 molecules of 3 phosphoglycerate left. So, the second step is showing that we have remaining 10 3 phosphoglycerates. With the 10 3 phosphoglycerates, that'll take us to the third step. And the third step is going to be called restocking the 3 phosphoglycerates. So, the other 10 3 phosphoglycerates are recycled back to the Barbalos by phosphate group. So you take 10 of those, and in order to do that, it will expend some energy. So 10 3 phosphoglycerates with 6 ATPs 
will make six ADPs with phosphorus, and you end up with the six ribulose biphosphate again, the five carbon sugar. And this is the last step of the carbon cycle. Now, this is a picture of the carbon cycle. In order to understand why we have issues with carbon dioxide and global warming, has to do with carbon dioxide. And we learned in photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is taken and used, made into sugar, whereas animals um, usually respire those plant respiration. So, how? What is the? Uh, carbon cycle. You have photosynthesis going up in the trees and also in the ocean with uh, photoplankton. Putting that to use, it takes in some of the carbon dioxide from the environment. But at the same time, there are things happening, like when things die, it, it puts in carbon dioxide, microbial respiration decomposition that happens in the sea and the ground. That creates more carbon dioxide. And of course, last but not least, is ourselves as humans we produce a lot of carbon dioxide waste so in a way the carbon cycle idea is that no matter you can't destroy the carbon dioxide but it is being put in different forms uh, either it's recycled being used up as a resource like in photosynthesis or discarded um, as a byproduct in photorespiration in the metabolism. And this understanding will come to our end of our calendar cycle. Thank you for listening.